I want, I want y'all niggas to know, man. Purple Rock, the biggest shit ever, bro. It might not be the biggest shit right, right now, now, nigga. But you know, at the end of the day, this nigga, shit biggest shit. Like, <laughs> <shit, laughs> like, bring it now, my mama, nigga. Oh God, and man, shout out to Dirty Boys, man. Y'all niggas the fucking best, nigga. Man, shout out to my boy. Shout out, shout out to Starter Cam, my man. Boy, shout, out, shout out to my manager, Ashley Miranda, man. I the fucking biggest. love you, man. You putting all this shit together, man. We gonna goddamn keep building for life. You feel what I'm Yeah, for sure. And if I'm gonna say this again, I'm gonna say it every single time, man. This shit moving in God's timing. Yo, Dirty, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Starter Cam, checking in one time for the one time, and I am back again with another Dirty Daily podcast. Make sure you log on to DirtyDaily.com to get more information on how you can be a part of this podcast as well. First and foremost, let me go ahead and give a big shout out to Ashley Miranda for setting this up, because I got my guys, Purple Rock, the duo, producer slash engineer duo, twin duo, in the building. Shout out to y'all. What's up, guys? What's going on, oh, starter man? man. What's Been going on, on starter? Man. Yeah. I gotta say that first. What's going on, bit bro? What's yeah. Up? Hey, listen. First and foremost, man, I appreciate y'all, man. Like y'all are, y'all are uh, the apple of my eye. You know what I mean? Like you know when a father sees his son do something really good. And you just, you know, you pat him on the back. You say, good job, son. You know, I watched <laughs> y'all career from the beginning, man. Like, y'all yeah, yeah. have been grinding out y'all's grind from the beginning. And you've been reluctant. You've been, you've been consistent. And now you're getting your gems and you're getting your, you're getting your flowers while you're here. So it's, it's definitely, you know what I mean? It's definitely something to be um, uh, happy about. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I've been seeing y'all working with, uh, with a lot of big names as well as some, some unknown names that I'm going to let y'all tell me about. But before we get into all that, because we know each other, we gotta make sure that the people know you too. So like, first and foremost, introduce yourself so people know you from left to right or from right to left. Y'all twins, so it's gonna be confusing. <laughs> all right, what's going on, people? My name, I rock on the beat, man. I'm a producer, you know what I'm saying? I'm getting into the engineer shit now. My sure. twin brother lead me into it. They gonna be the GOAT. Show you see, learn from the best, you feel me? And this is, yeah, what's going on, man? I'm Piro, I'm an audio engineer, I'm a producer. All right, you know what I'm saying? I do a little bit of everything. Hey man, we the collect the purple rock, man. Sure. Purple rock. So, how did you guys come up with the name Purple Rock? Let's get into that because Purple Rock has been something Rob for sure that you you keep you. I think I think you kind of like you put the bug in my ear early on that Purple Rock was going to be the collaborative name um, mm -hmm. because it, it's kind of hard when you're twins to try to make one make them understand who both people are unless you right. have something that's collab that's collaborative. So, how did you guys come up with the name Purple Rock? Yeah, all right, so the purple rock stuff, it, it, it really formed off of, like, the purples, you know, that's our, our birthstone, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. Purple, my favorite color, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. So that's why I really came for that from, and the royalty, you know what I'm saying, that purple, it really stands for something. So we got the purple, and the, the rock is an acronym. It, it stands for rely on Christ, on Christ completely. Whoa, that's, that's, I didn't know that until today. Yeah. So the rock, and so purple, of course, we know what purple stands for as far as royalty and the purple being a, a, a color of strength. But yes, the rock stands for rely on Christ. What's the last word? What's the last C? Completely. Completely. Man, yeah. come on. Now I got it from, man. I got to tell you. All right. So when I was young. Yeah, sure. All right. So we was heavy into like music and stuff like that. We was getting into all type of shit. Christian rap, regular rap. Uh, it don't matter what type of rap. We were just interested in it or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we caught on to this Christian rapper, man. And he from Atlanta or whatever. I mean, when we was real young, he was young as hell running his shit or whatever. And we was like, man, that shit hard, bro. He was a Christian rapper, bro. And we was like, dang, like that's fire. His name was Al Rock Williams. You know what I'm saying? Little I rock with you. So I was mm -hmm. like, he was young when we that, that shit hard. You know what I'm saying? That shit hard. And he had the little afternoon rely on Christ completely. And I was like, that's hard. Like how he just able to decode his shit. You know what I'm saying? And he's able to got there and run off with his message or whatever. So like that shit inspired us a little bit. So I knew I can I'ma run the beats off. So that's where that rock came from. Sure. That's a beautiful thing, bro. I mean, for for it to come from something like that and let that be the the inspiration to what's gonna now be you guys' legacy. You feel what I'm saying? Like I think that's I think that's a dope acronym in, in itself, in an essence of itself to 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 run with. Um Pharaoh, for you, because you're the producer within the group and I mean well you're the engineer within the group and and um Rock does Rock does all the uh does all the uh produ production for mm -hmm. the group. Um so how do you guys balance that 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 mesh between 
producing and engineering. So like, how's the process work when it comes to that? Um, I would say that it's like the perfect formula in my eyes, to be totally honest, because when I think about the situation, it's like I can literally, literally help form and mold and have different sounds inside of a beat that it be that you can you'll never really hear the sounds of it until you can put a producer an engineer's ear to it. Like you can add some type of mix to it and have it sounding like more live or more like it's just you know what I'm saying it's just pushing to become better in the situations. Like especially with the beat stuff, like I started grasping onto the beat things with my twin because like I, I think I seen that he wanted like to really like be in this this music stuff for sure. So when it came to the beat stuff, I just I just push him, bro. Like I started patterning or something like that. He'll start a pattern, I'll push him, bro. Like, nah. Next, next pattern needs to be bigger than this. Just because I already have that mentality from my engineer stuff. And that's sir. big. No, that's for, that, that's big. So so with that, like you guys pretty much are able to collaborate and is this, there's, is there any fights or any quarrels when it comes to the beats making or like when, when Pharaoh may put a mix on it that you don't like rock or, or, nah. or rock, are y'all just, are y'all just gelling well together on everything? Mm -hmm. It's more of a like challenge. It's not even. It's a challenge sometimes, but I know that he knows certain things that I don't know when it comes to music shit. Like he's been in it longer than me. And right. He's an engineer. He listens to all types of beats. He, even if he don't want to, he has to listen to all types of beats. So sure. he, he listens to all types of mixes as well. So when it comes to him getting his input, I'm more of like listen. I that makes listen. sense. That makes sense. And see, listening is definitely a key when it comes to producing. Um, I so that's safe to say, basically, Pharaoh, that you could be. Well, you are the executive producer of the of the scenario, exactly. right? Yes, which makes sense. That. So yeah. let's 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 go back a little bit. Let's go back in the history books. Um, so so basically, Pharaoh, you brought you brought your brother into your situation now that you are with uh, with Streamcut, and mm -hmm. in that you guys kind of just collaboratively start working with all different types of artists. One particularly that a lot of people know about right now is Mulatto. Um, right. I think I saw one time you post on your Instagram page that she would have ten hour sessions. How would those sessions be for you? For you, the engineer, for you, the producer of the of the records, how would that be for you when you are like literally sitting through 10 hour sessions with Mulatto? That's a good ass question, right? Amazing there. question. I ain't had nothing like that. I love it. Okay, so for me, um, for Mulatto, like I would like to say that I'm invested in her career like 100%. So it doesn't seem like I'm actually just like engineer and I'm invested. So it's more than just a, a engineer sitting at a table. It's more like, a creator like helping out a collaborative yeah. collaborative creation inside the room so it's like a, a energy a vibe it's like something that's meshed perfectly so a 10-hour session don't really feel too too bad in, the, in a sense when you when you're creating and there's something coming naturally you see what i'm saying so I'm, it, i love it right. so you at the ninth hour and you you're at the ninth hour of a session with mulatto right mm -hmm. and you know everybody's tired everybody's trying to figure out what the next move is um, what's the temperament in the studio? What's like, how, how is, how is, how is the vibes in the studio by, t by the time that ninth hour comes around? See, I, so, so Lotto worked real, real hard session to the point where she like drained herself right around like a, I don't, I don't just put the time to it, but like, I'll say like 11 or 12 o'clock she'll drain herself. So we had this moment where we revamped. So, um, I'll do something like, I'll just take out the element of being in the studio or, um, I turn on some music, like something that she normally used to, that's something that she done heard from her childhood, like, oh, let's do it, or some T.I. stuff, because Mulatto love T.I. If nobody don't know that, Mulatto love T.I., she love Gucci. So I'm gonna cut on one of them songs like that, and she just gonna run it word for word, I'm play the instrumental, and it's gonna bring back childhood memories, just like being in the club. So she's gonna sing it word for word, get out of the element of being bored, being stuck to the song, mentally trained to the beat she been hearing over and over, you know what I'm saying? Just take out elements for me. That's something that I revamp the vibe or just food or get liquor or some some light, you know what I'm saying? It's easy. Creating a vibe is a thing, I think it's a it's an unknown um quality that a lot of engineers are supposed to have and right. and, and they don't sometimes. You know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. it's hard for artists to really get in a vibe or to be able to create a great music or create any type of great um, you know atmosphere without yeah. the people around them having the same type of energy or at least pushing towards that same type of energy and the fact that you know that um your artist needs this type of things in order to you know get to that space it's good you know what i mean it's dope that you do that and um i know you've worked with a plethora of other artists not just mulatto like who's some of the other artists that you work with um both of y'all really g-man yadi offset asian doll um, Jim Jones. Jim Jones. I did the Diplomats. I, I missed the Diplomats album. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, that's hard. That's, that's big. Crazy. 
Nah, I had chills in that session, boy. I, I was mm. just grow to me, boy, man. But um, who else? Who else? Who else? Um, I did this shit with Duke before. Um, I don't know, man. I just Eligible two like changed that. recently, man. I ain't gonna lie, that shit two crazy. Changed. Hey, look, that man is everything you think he is, bro. Like that, every expectation in my mind. That's two changes. He smoked the entire session. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. So, I mean, being that you guys have, have been so fresh in this business and it's, it's cool to look at you guys' eyes because like when you say a two change or you say a diplomats and you guys' eyes light up on the old, well, not necessarily old school. I mean, two change is above 40 and I'm sure Jim Jones is above 40. But mm -hmm. the, the when you look at some of the pioneers um, of the rap game and you you compare them to some of these guys from now. What differences do you see when it comes to recording the music, or even when it comes to some of the beat making that they prefer? Um, oh, that's hey, you, you, you on your you <laughs> shit, man. You, I ain't never heard no questions like this, bro. <laughs> All right, so I can say as far as the pace, um, I prefer honestly me. Um, I prefer a more seasoned artist because the pace of the session moves a lot faster, just to be totally honest. Um, you don't naturally have to create a vibe for an artist who is seasoned because the artist normally comes in and, and controls the room in reference to an artist who is learning how to actually become an artist. You see what I'm saying? Nah, um, other things that are different. Um, okay, so for... In my position as, as as Sparrow, okay, so if I'm not, if I'm working with somebody who is, is this, is this frozen? No. Nah. It's frozen, bro. Start. I don't see y'all. Now I see y'all. Okay, oh, okay. Like, what the fuck? My bad. All right, so. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. And then when I'm working with on um, seasoned artists and, uh, what I was just saying, what I was just saying. You said seasoned artists, basically, so when you're working with seasoned artists, it's easy to work with seasoned artists because they, they know what they want, opposed mm -hmm. to a newer artist who has to, you know, of course, learn learn a little bit more um, in order to get to a seasoned artist level. Mm -hmm. So I also said about the beats as well. Oh, yeah, and the beats, um, their beat selection is, is uh, I would say, totally different. Totally mm -hmm. different. That's just to be totally honest. See, I, I, in their process they go through is, is, is a lot different. I can say that, too. Sure, as in like choosing beats. Choosing, choosing beats, they process. Yeah, see, see, a seasoned artist would have like somebody in their corner, like who literally is like designated to it. See, when I seen Two Chains, I watched him have like somebody who was designated to actually like pick his beats, pick, pick his beats make them decisions for him because they don't they don't really have time for that type of stuff. They're there to be the artist at that point, not to be an A and R and pick the beats out and things of that nature. You know? Right. Yes, yeah, so, so. So, so Rock, my question for you. Um, you've been a very, you know, you've been a very quiet kept individual when it comes to your production. You haven't been really very, you know, as flamboyant as other yeah. producers. Um, but you've worked alongside a, a, a plethora of some, some great hit makers as far as producing is, is, is concerned, right? Mm -hmm. What's one thing that you've learned, right, over your career time that you've been in? And what's one thing that you've learned, um, that you wish you would have known in the beginning? Like as a producer, as coming in as a producer, what's one thing that you that you now know that you wish you knew, you know, maybe two, three years ago? Everybody pay sign the song. Everybody got their own pace. Everybody got their own line. So you can't be deterred by what's going on with the next man or what the next man just bought or your partner just bought. Like, you know, your partner go buy a chain and you see that shit, that shit, oh, damn, that shit crazy, bro. I can't wait that I go get one. That, that ain't the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's going to happen, my boy. Like, yeah. that's, all, that's what I wish I would have known because I was that person. Not gonna mm. And so it's, cool that, it's cool that you can admit that, too, because you got to yeah. think, like, um, between our generations, right, I think we are like, maybe anywhere from 10 years apart. Like our mm. generations are two totally different generations, right? Okay. So we see things differently. And I feel like y'all's generation is, is like, it's very microwave, you know what I'm saying? It's social media it, shit, it's, bro. It's social media, you know what I mean? But I, like we were just saying off, off, of, off, of the, um, off of the interview, like people want you to post every day. People want to see your content every day. People want to see your face every day on social media. And I'm, I'm a reserved guy, you know what I mean? I don't necessarily feel like I should be on social media every single day. But this is the way that the world is now. Um, being that we live in this age of social media where, you know, social media is, is so powerful, how do you guys adjust and how do you guys like reach out and network with your, with, within your social media? All right. First of all, we all need to understand that social media is a tool. 
it's a tool and just a tool <laughs> you wake up in the morning and you, you certain things you just do like it, it's like that's not it's a, it's a tool it's not a like a habit type shit but it does help build your shit and it's free as fuck so like then why not like that's that's how i come with the instagram shit. <laughs> how do you feel about question. it how do you feel about it Farrell? about instagram i mean just social media in general um it's a blessing and a curse to be totally honest I gotta say it because just just for to somebody to know your whereabouts like that is just like questioning it for me. Mm. Just because I'm a reserved person myself, but in a sense, I just understand the the the, the wanting and the, the I just understand people want to know what you really got going on that day because I was that same person when I was younger. Like I was big on Travis Scott, big on Two Chains when I was young, and whenever they used to drop vlogs and stuff like that, I used to be on the like the the edge of my seat. Oh God, so, especially with Khalid shit. That yeah. Means, I, so so now they got Instagram and you can see like what they're doing on a day to day. It's just like watching a vlog every day. So I, right. I mean, like I said, it's a blessing and a curse. No cut. And now moving forward, right? Moving forward into the next 2021, because at this point we're two years, two two months away from from the new year. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, like even as we speak right now, we're like almost just less than you know a few days away from um, electing a new president. Um, right. Or electing our, the same president. Where do you guys stand on politics? Like, I feel like the politics in the music industry is, of course, you know, it's 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 very vast. It's a very vast uh, playing field when you talk about politics in the music industry. But where do you guys like, as young as you are, are you guys even registered to vote? Yeah, yeah. I'm registered. Have you voted? Nah, I haven't voted. No, nah, I'm gonna be all the way honest. What are you <laughs> waiting for? <laughs> all right, so <laughs> no, the reason why I ask, let me tell you the reason why I ask, because see, me, myself, I'm not a, I'm not a U.S. citizen, right? Mm -hmm. But I've been in this country my whole life. So right. when I look at the scenario as year and year and year and year and year go by, mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as just fiscal years of, of, of presidents that are, are, are inducted into uh, presidency, mm -hmm. I feel like I've never had that opportunity to just get out there and vote, even in the time that I've been allowed to vote. I mean, even in the time that I've been of age to vote. But I feel like those that are younger than me now, um, they take it. They take it for granted. You know what I mean? Like you have this opportunity. You have this opportunity that was given to us, like by our forefathers. Like this wasn't something that we were granted at one point. You know what I'm saying? If you know what I'm talking about. So it's right. like, if if we have now this opportunity to do something, regardless of who you're voting for, why not? You know, act on it. And I'm not saying that you guys don't. That because you haven't voted yet doesn't mean that you're bad or anything. It's just. How do we get more young people to get excited about voting? And how do we get more young people to understand that voting is a good thing? Because if you don't vote, then it's just like, it's just like, you know, going to, going to the, um, it's like going to a karaoke bar and not singing. Like, what are, what are you going to a karaoke bar for if you, if you're not going to sing? Like, no, how are they going to hear you? You feel what I'm saying? So in order for people to hear you, you got to vote. And I feel like as young people, that we have um, with young people having this right to vote, it's necessary that we, as, as influencers, right? I feel like we'd be the ones that at least shed some light on it. It's not me telling you, hey, go vote for this person or go vote for that person. Just get up and vote at the end of the day. That's real, that's real, that's true. That, so the way that we do that is starting with us. Like I ain't, I can't goddamn speak on too much shit if I ain't doing it my damn self, cause that's hypocritical. So like that would start with us. You you helping us right now at this point, and letting us know how important it is for us mm -hmm. to vote. So like, yeah, we register, but that don't mean shit. So we need to go do that. that right. I appreciate you, bro. That's sure, really no, correct. That's, I mean, and I feel that's like even fun. even as even as you're registered to vote. Don't just register to vote, but do the research. Do the research before you vote, because then if you just voting just to be voting, then you, you're really causing harm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you're really causing harm the way it's, it's not necessary. So like, do your research. Find out about your about your um your senates and your governors, and and find out about the the lower tier judges. You know what I mean? And some of the higher tiers, the supreme supreme court judges and stuff like that. Do your research on these people. Know their background, because that way. You know, I mean, it's easy access, just as easy to jump on Instagram, it's easy to jump on Google and type in somebody's name and find no, out really. a little bit of history about them. So, no, really. so, so that way that our next generation can not have situations that we're looking at right now where, you know, we're getting false information on how we deal with a pandemic, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but I feel like even with that, right, in this pandemic, we've gone through a lot of different things. How have you mm. guys been able to, you know, keep your heads on level ground during this pandemic? Um, I can say this honestly. For me and Twin, we was like back. Go back to the fact that we was being like um 
introverts. Like we just we were very reserved guys before, so <laughs> it really didn't affect us much. It just happened to stay in the house like that. Like we already dedicate a lot of time to just locking up, locking in, and cooking, cooking up. Like just we don't go anywhere or go to no clubs or eat out or nothing like that. We do time to time, but like we mainly doing it amongst ourselves. Like. We don't really go out to no clubs like that, so that shit don't really pick our attention. That's a lot of the stuff that really like, like had people mind boggling like that because they really couldn't figure out what to do with most of their time. Right. But also, you can also speak on this the so, workflow. That shit was hell. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. Even, I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be a real nigga because everybody <laughs> wanna cap and shit and talk about I got different horses and shit. Nigga, I just committed my life to the music shit. So like, when that shit happened, it was like, what the fuck? Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like. So it got like, it got faster. Or it got like how it got a lot a lot more work or a lot less work. It was just like the the going to Six Flags and riding the scariest roller coaster ever. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> talking about, <laughs> about the highest highs and the lowest lows, bro. With this yeah. goddamn pandemic, that's real, bro. I'm just nah, being I real. It. I get it. I mean, and in, in, in the pandemic, you have to even be more cautious too because now it's like you don't know where some of these artists are coming from. Like, they right. might, you know what I mean? You gotta you gotta be as cautious as possible, and I totally get that. <laughs> Um, I mean, now that you guys have uh, you guys have gotten uh, collaboratively um, with the collaborative effort, um, you guys have gotten your first. I'm assuming this is your first plaque, your first yeah. physical plaque from yeah. Mulatto's yeah. Um, bitches, yeah. bitch from the south. Yeah, we gotta see that. Yeah, it's, it's Ooh, nice. that's a beautiful thing, man. And that's not no, that's not one of them bullshit um, plaques they be giving out. They be giving out bullshit nah, plaques, you know that, right? Nah, that's, the real way. <laughs> that's the real one. Yeah, that's the real one. <laughs> nah, come on now, and that's a beautiful thing. So when you when you got that plaque, man, well, let me know what was going through you. first. You fair, what, what was going through your body when you got that plaque? Oh. So how first did you feel when wanted, you got that black? I just wanted to give a special thanks to String Cut, first of all, because the way they put it together, it was like immaculate. Like for them to know when I walked into the building, to have the camera ready as soon as I, I step into the door, it just they just made the moment just like way more sweeter. Just like just to be totally honest, so I'm put that out there. So I, I was just like jittery as hell, just like excited. Like as soon as I walked into the studio, they had bitch from South Song playing, they had my plaque right there, cameras rolling. I was just <laughs> it's the moment I never forget to be totally down. So I never That's forget that. That's beautiful, man. That's yes, a beautiful sir. thing. And how did you feel for your brother, man? Like, cause seeing seeing all his hard work, right? I know you've watched your brother work hard, and and he's motivated you to get you know get up there and, and get in that oh, studio man. and make those beats and, and mm -hmm. get in as many sessions as possible. So how did it feel to really see all his hard work pay off? Man, that shit is a blessing, man. This is all. This is like the stuff that we talked about back in the day. Like, even even though we didn't know. Like specifically what we was gonna be doing with this music shit, mm -hmm. I, we always felt a tug towards this stuff when we would be drawn in. So like we would talk about things like this and not knowing like this was gonna be going on. You know, so now that it's coming into like reality, it's beautiful as hell. Like, I can't even do nothing. Thank God. That's real. That's real. That's real. So like future reference, right? Who do we want to work with now? Who is the Purple Rock collaborative gonna work with in the future? Or who do you guys got your eyes set on? Or who are some artists that are unknown that we should, that should we, that we should be checking for? You want to start? With, you want to start with the unknown? You want to start with whatever it is? Unknown, all right, for sure. Um, I can I can name a couple of artists and unknown that I got my eye on that I, you know, what I'm saying just been locking in with. It's it's a, a female artist from South Carolina named Gigi. I like her. She's a female. And she dope. Yeah. She raw. I say she raw. It's it, it's like no pretty shit to it. She coming straight. Like I want you to feel where she coming from. It's a young a young artist um, named DJ DJ the rapper. We like we like family. I've been around DJ for like how long you think? Like, like four months. Like four months. Like four months now. A lot down with him. Like he like family now. Mm. Hard. That's hard. Seventeen. He young. Locking in. You know what I'm saying? Um, not just artists but songwriters. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? London J. Goat. Fam. When I say goat, but that shit right there is like he drive you. You got them. Keep going hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we got that people that. Uh, also, um, we working with like smaller artists, like um, my partner named like, Trap Star Moody, hard as fuck, hard as fuck. Mm -hmm. We build, we building, and like Shot building his shit. He building his campaign. He got them been doing shit on his own. Mm -hmm. So like, when the time right, that shit gonna pop off when it's ready. So like, that's that Trap Star Moody. And then we going to the artists that we wanna work with. All right, I wanna work with on the producer tip. I wanna work with Two Chains again. See, I'm actually trying to brew that together right now, put it into the universe right now. That shit go ahead and make it happen. That yeah, shit go for happen. sure, for sure. I wanna work with Meek Mill for sure. Yeah. Because that's that's something that's destined to happen. I know that's gonna come together for sure. Yeah. Um 
a big fan of Thug and uh, Future. So that's something that I've been like, forever wanting to do together. So that, that's big. And then I got some shit, bro. I text my brother this last night, bro. We about, we about to do some crazy shit, bro. Everybody. T.I., bro. T.I., bro. Oh. We, about to, we about to do it. We about to do it. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, in a, it it ain't, ain't locked ain't. in yet, but we speaking it into existence. Let's yeah, put it like yeah. that. We speaking it. We ain't ain't nothing wrong with speaking shit. it into existence, man. Definitely. I feel like that's that's the way you receive things from the universe. You got to yes, speak. Sir. You know what I'm saying? I yes, want sir. a new house right now. And I'm, I'm speaking it into it. I'm actually yes, on the search right now for a new house. Come on, now. I'm, I'm on my third house right now. So I'm on, I'm on yes, a search for a new house. So I'm saying, so like, I want another house. So I'm speaking it into existence that's going to happen. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, listen to me, y'all. I'm so proud of y'all. Y'all's journey is literally a unmatched journey. You know what I'm saying? Literally for two brothers, twins at that, to be doing what y'all are doing is an inspiration to us all. I think yeah, that sir. you guys are going to be very, very successful as well. Um, I wish you the best and much success. Let these Thank guys you. know how they can follow you, and, and, we'll, and we'll wrap it up like that. All right, man. You can follow me on all platforms. I rock on the beat. I R O C C on the beat, nigga. <laughs> yeah, and follow me on Instagram <laughs> at DJ Young Pharaoh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All that. DJ Young Pharaoh and I rock on the beat. <laughs> yes, Make sir, sure dude. you remember the name because you heard it here first. I'm telling you, telling you, these guys are going to be big. All right. This is your boy Starter Cam. Dirty Daily Podcast, dirtydaily.com. Make sure you follow me as well at Starter Cam on the gram. And um, mm -hmm. like that, we gone. <laughs>